And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Ginger, I love. are you back from vacation, you world traveler, you? I am. Hey, you guys. You Welcome. crazy gal, you. I'm telling you what, this is so, so fun. We're glad to be back with the live show. We're going to just uh, cross our fingers here for a good feed, because if we disappear, it's not our fault. You know, <laughs> just this is the disclaimer at the beginning. Yeah, we like to disclaim that right off the bat. Yeah, I like to do that. You know, some people have, you know, have said, you know, gosh, sometimes, you know, your live shows, they get out of sync. Well, they'll get out of sync if, if, and we're not trying to jinx it, but they'll get out of sync. If, for instance, we lose feed and come back, sometimes it gets out of sync. But, you know, just kind of follow along and play along because what we're doing here tonight is we're going to tackle something we haven't done before while we chat with you is that we're going to be doing a fairly large painting. It's um, 12 by 16. 12 by 16. And the reason I did it was I found this is one of our, you know, another one of our old dead artist guys I, I you know, found. And I felt that because of the way he painted this picture, that it almost had to be large enough for you to be able to get the brush strokes right. If we did it real small, it might not be as effective. Does that make sense? Sometimes, and the reason I normally want you to do small paintings and not these giant paintings on YouTube or even in our art academy is because paint's expensive. Learn how to do it first. Somebody sent me a painting because I do personal art coaching on our in our art school. Somebody sent me a painting they'd done on 30 by 40. And, um, holy moly. And then holy moly, I'm looking at it going, well, if you had done a small version first, we could have worked out the design challenges because she was making it up. And then we could have um, discussed why you needed reference photos because you really should never make it up. And also, you would have gotten down the brush strokes, the color mixing and everything on something small. Keep it to 8 by 10, something little. Then you can do it bigger. But in this case, tonight we're going to do a little larger um, because I think it could be pretty. But I'm telling you what, this would be stunning 30 by 40, but not the first time out of the box. And then also we recommend that people watch the videos all the way through first. That takes a little time, but you know, how much time do you've got if you're just repainting everything a hundred times because you didn't quite get it? Um, it's easier to kind of get a feel for what we're doing. So that's what I'm going to suggest you do. We're going to be doing that and inviting everyone to subscribe who has not subscribed yet to our channel. I'm, you know, um, we had a really good two week uh, vacation, week holiday. We went to flew up to New Jersey. I'm going to tell you about this as we paint. We've got this 16 by 20 canvas, so, John. So, so uh, you want me to? Uh, can you can you focus can. back down here on our thing? Oh, we I have know. to get going with this, you guys. We may end up doing this in two parts, depending. We'll see. We may have to do it over two nights, and that's okay rather than rush through it, okay? So we'll see how we are. Oh, we have never done that before, but it might not be a terrible idea. That's just what I'm saying. It might not be a terrible idea. So let's, um, let's uh, first off, I slightly sanded with a fine sandpaper the canvas, and I'm gonna take the back of it now and spray it with some fine water, mist, fine mist water, as opposed to grade or some super water. <laughs> uh, just, um, you know, tap water that's in a fine mist. How's that? Well, you know, you forget, but I don't, I, okay, one of my friends who was German said she really felt she could understand English when she could understand how fast I talk, because I talk quickly, and I know that, okay? Well, speaking well, of talking quickly, on yeah. YouTube, you can now turn down the speed of the videos after they're recorded. If yeah. you find Ginger's a little quick, you can go to three-quarter, half, and quarter speed. It's up underneath the little gear on the settings on the lower right-hand side. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, you see I've done that. Now when I, now this is, to hear the drum, hear this drum sound, that's what you want. If you, if your canvas doesn't sound like a drum, spray the back. Can that, because it's, it's, it'll shrink a little bit, tighten it up. All right, so what we want to do is get an underpainting on this. I'm using one of these Bristol on brushes. This is a number 12, fairly nice, fairly large brush. I'm going to dampen it, wipe it off on a towel. I'm going to do something that we normally, on a small painting, I don't do this. On a large painting, I do. I'm going to lightly mist 
lightly is the key word here, friends, missed the, <laughs> missed the canvas, okay? Lightly missed it. Now I'm gonna take a little bit, the colors I've got out are ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber and a tiny bit of Payne's gray, okay? But about 1%, okay? And what we want is a very, very dark background. And I'm going down and across, down and across, pushing fairly hard with the brush. And I wanna smooth this out. It's mostly ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of this brown and this Payne's gray. Payne's gray, if you don't have Payne's gray, Payne's gray is black and, um, and ultramarine blue. Now you're gonna go, but Ginger, you said not to use black. Well, the thing is that work we are duplicating, or not really duplicating, but we are inspired by this old dead artist stuff, which I'll tell you in a minute as soon as I get to that part. We're, we're inspired by his artwork. And so if he used that color, if I wanna kind of um, get that effect, then I need to use that color. Now the trick is, this has to be thick enough. See, if it's getting too watery, that's not good. I don't want it too thick because we've got to be able to dry it. It would have been nice to have prepped this ahead of time, but we just, uh, you know, can't got, you know, got, got ashore today. And uh, too much uh, dark color here. Let's add some more blue to that. And uh, basically what we're doing now is just covering the canvas. And this is a good, good thing to do. Uh, this will help all the other stuff here. Now, you see how you can still just, it's just sort of nothing's going on here. This is just, we need some paint on the canvas. That's all we're doing. And the thing about it is, is a lot of the canvases we use uh, because of the expense of everything are, are not the best canvases in the world. People always say, what do you buy? It's always buy what's on sale. So sometimes your paint will not grab as well. Sometimes you'll see me paint something and you'll go do it and your paint isn't grabbing to the canvas. But if you have a good underpainting like this, this will help your paint adhere to the next layer. And that's one of the benefits of doing an underpainting, not just, just painting straight on white canvas. The, the days are gone when they're using, you know, the gesso. See, everybody says, well, what's gesso? Well, gesso cause means a lot of things to a lot of people. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> so you can't, um, can't go yeah, by the gesso. That. No two brands of, of companies use the same stuff that they call gesso, but the canvas is treated. You don't need to treat it again. You just need to do an underpainting. And also, by the way, you can buy colored gesso, and we've got some videos on that. So you see, there's, there it is. There's what I've got. Nothing too fancy. You see the brushwork. Nothing, nothing's too fancy here. What we're going to do now is take the hairdryer, which I'm assuming is plugged in. Is it not, John? Should be. Now and I'm going to move, <laughs> move, move this. Well, I'm going to have to tip this up. I don't want to dry the paint while I'm drying this. All right, okay. so I'm going to dry this. John, if you, you listen, while John's doing that, again, we want to welcome everybody. We're going to be doing, if you just joined us, um, we're really proud of the um, paintings that you guys have been sending in, and particularly those of you who are taking advantage of the personal art coaching. I've seen some huge improvement. We'll talk a little bit about that later. And also, we have a new Facebook art club. We have a fan club. It's called the Ginger Cook Acrylic Art Club. And um, it's sort of a invitation only. You can apply to be a member and we'd love to have you. But uh, you know, you've got some questions we have answered. Well, John will tell you more about that. And also we may have time to show you what some of our, our artists that are either watching our YouTube show or our, our Art Academy are, have been doing. Okay, here we go. I'm going to dry. John's going to talk. Okay, you're muted. All right, she's muted out right now. Um, she didn't want to put up the reference photo as of yet. Uh, not positive why. She said, just don't put it up yet. So look for that a little bit later. We want to appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, love having you here. We're glad to be back live again. I'm getting a little bit of buffering on my side, but I think it might be the PC. Looks like our feed is good. Uh, Ginger was alluding to our new Facebook group we've just started up. It is a private group. It looks like Wendy just put the link in there. Um, you need to apply. We do check. We, we, it's going to be a very safe haven. Uh, a couple people are getting some buffering. I, we're looking good on our side, guys, right now. I'm looking at everything, and it's, it's feeding it out there, so I'm not really sure. Like I said, I was getting it, too. So... I think it's going to hang in there, so just kind of grin and bear it for a little bit. So it's called the Ginger Cook 
Acrylic Painting Club. Uh, Ginger Cook Club for short is what we're doing. I'm not sure if refreshing will help. I'm not sure, again, why we are buffering, because the feed is going out excellent. I'm getting no errors on the feed side of the computer. What I've done is I separated all the YouTube stuff from the feed machine. Let me bring her back. And uh, I'm, again, not sure why you guys are experiencing buffering. Just buffers a little bit and comes right back. So let's just keep that in mind. Uh, Ginger, you're back, back. on All right, on so this air. is kind of dry. It's not as dry as I would like it if I were painting this in the studio. I'd dry a little longer, but, uh, you know, we're not. So we're going to move on. And what I'm going to do um, now is I'm going to... Um, draw on my vase. Now they've been asking about the reference photo. I told them you didn't want to put it up as of yet. What would you like to do about that? Why don't you show everybody the reference photo now? Let's just show them what we're doing. We're not going to do it exactly like this, but this is our reference, all right? I gotta find it now. One second. John will put it up because yeah. it's it's a fairly complicated piece, and right now I'm just sort of sharpening my pencil. Someone wrote the other day and said, "Where did you get this?" I got this little pencil sharpener from a nice um, artist in England, but it is by Conti. It's called a Conti of Paris, and it's specially made for the Conti white charcoal um, uh, pencil. See, they sharpen <laughs> otherwise. And somebody else said they like to use knives. I like to stay away from knives. It's fine. Yeah, we don't like to have sharp objects with uh, ginger. Okay, so I'm going to say that I'm going to come down here. I'm looking at his. His vase starts pretty close down to this because it's a portrait, right? It's coming down about like this. So what is that? All right, you know, it's, it's about, this is about halfway. And um, he's got a little vase here like this. And then he's going to come down like this with a neck. And he comes up with a, a, the, the, on this side. So if you, if you just imagined a tube here, maybe that would help you. Just a tube like that, okay? And then about, um, same, same on each side, he's got this kind of bulges on each side of his, see? There you go. Make them the same. Just whatever you do on one side, do to the other. And then up here, if you drew, drew a straight line across here like this, and this comes out and straight down on each side, and that's his. It's kind of a pretty vase. It's a really, a, it's a very simple vase to draw. And then it comes back down here. And I think I've got this. This is pretty. Everything's really kind of wet to be able to draw that on here. So I think I'm going to bring this down a little bit, make these a little bit fatter, like this. This is my vase coming around here like that, and then I've got my. Um, my handle's coming out this way, and then the, here's the top of the vase. So that this is basically a pretty a nice vase to draw, don't you think? So the rest of all this is flowers. And the reason I'm doing that now is because we're going to have to put the background around it. And I think that's just a little bit easier to put in if we do it like that. So that, we're going to, now we're going to change brushes. This is a um, number 10. It's a little bright brush. And what he did, which is interesting to me, what this artist did, and you're going, what he who? Hang on, who, what, uh, this guy, is the name is um, Odrian, God, I've got to put my glasses on and read it, um, R-E-D-O-N, okay? That's his last name, R-E-O-D-N? Yeah, yeah Odrian, O-D-I-L-O-N, could be either, I don't know. <laughs> it's Rod R-E-D-O-N, comma, O-D-I-L-O. And you do this on purpose to drive me nuts, don't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be either way. I mean, no, who knows? it can't be either way. There's a comma in his name. Well, is that the I'm first or the last name? The, the first part is Rodan. No, his last name is Redden. R E D O N. Redden. Okay. Or, his first or, but, name is the O D I L. We'll talk more about him later, but this is what he did, right? So now this is what I've got. Okay. So I want you to kind of see how that would be, you know, how that would be. And also, it's that these kind of curve here like that. I just want you to see that these are going to curve like that when you actually get them on here. They won't be quite that stiff, but that's that's our vase. And I think I have it fat enough, okay? So now the background around it is going to be this. We're going to start with some the same colors we used before, okay? But we're going to add a little bit of white to it, which is not that. It's you, okay? Just titanium white. Okay, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. Here's a little bit of white. And, all right, so 
there I've got a little bit lighter there you go a little bit of these kind of gray this up a bit okay now here's the thing about about here the brush strokes are going this way okay now this is important See, I'm kind of out of blue here so let's put some more out I'm just gonna just take the there the brush strokes are going this way okay and they're small they're all going this way everybody's with me on that the brush of your brush strokes really makes a difference the direction and we want some phthalo blue out now too because I'm seeing some other colors in here so out comes the phthalo okay as I'm painting I've never painted this before I'm painting this with you so I'm kind of deciding how he did it and so I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue a little bit of white to this a little bit of this a paint's gray color and uh, there we go so we're going to brighten this up a little bit we're going to start bringing the brush strokes this way toward our vase like that and since this is dry enough this should this should work pretty well this is our first layer of this now everything else is going up and down this is all going up and down like that okay this is all going up and down but it doesn't go up about more than about say three fingers above the top of the vase so here we go and we're just going to kind of add a little bit of white to that too we're going to just kind of I think I need some red here I'm looking at this going again how many colors is she going to put out but I'm looking at this going here cad red medium kind of grays things I'm not real impressed with what the brown was doing so when I'm talking about less than one percent I put a lot out but we're talking about less than one percent okay there we go we're going to put this up here like this and this is our up and down brush strokes if, if you appreciate that your brush strokes stay everything and uh, I don't think that um, uh, people often consider that that your brush strokes make such a big difference but they really do For instance, particularly when you're painting water or anything like that um, generally um, waterfalls are up and down you know water is level tables generally have a tendency to be label level if you're painting upside down you're really implying a wall I mean if you're painting vertically like this you're implying a wall now here's a little bit of paints gray and we're gonna come in here right next to this and he's got this little bit of a kind of a separation here between um, the table and the wall just like that while it's still wet okay now this is about as far up as we're going with this here's our um, now I'm looking at his brush strokes and I really like to look at it because that makes such a difference when you're painting the stuff in now what she's reaching across is an iPad with the image on it so she can blow it up yeah I can blow it up see what the nice thing about an iPad is I can really blow it up and see what he painted you know, see how he did it and I think I want a little bit brighter blue right here and I can really see these colors and you know of course I can always come back and and go over this and add more colors but this is a pretty good uh, um, start start good start that's it that's a good <laughs> I know, start. Big, word, big word there yeah well you know what we're just doing I'm gonna go, go down one size brush brush strokes I'm gonna go down one size now that our next color we're gonna be doing is like burnt sienna now this is what made this this is what attracted me to this painting this burnt sienna cad red medium and yellow that's what we want and I think this is really pretty the way this background works now this will not work if your background is not dry because yellow and blue make what I believe green that's it so since you you don't want that so we want some bright orange color here a little bit of burnt sienna we want to come up here like this over this dark color we're using a smaller brush now we've gone down to an eight and we're gonna just and yeah, let's see let's take a little tiny bit of paints gray in that color and dull it down just a touch it's not so bright now you see how we're coming and you don't want this you, you don't want to just start mixing a big block of color you want to mix as you go so that you vary the color of the background and nothing is more dull than a solid colored background it's just boring okay now you're so, using paints gray on this right yeah a little bit of paints gray which is, and again to reiterate if you don't have paints gray it's just um, uh, ultramarine blue and black it's paints gray 
Ultramarine blue and black is your Payne's gray. Yeah, you can buy Payne's gray, but that's what they made it out of. How's that? There you go. You know, if you're not sure. So, all right, so that's a little bright, so let's just dull that up a little bit. You know, because, you know, this is probably what this artist used. Okay, so we're just coming down here to our blues, and we're just sort of stopping. Do you see that? So, um, as we work this in, back in here, this is our background. This beautiful kind of orange-brown background. Here's just a little bit of burnt sienna, a tiny bit of Payne's Gray with it. I mean, I've had Payne's Gray for years. I still have a tube of it. It's just a last, because I don't normally paint with it. But it can be effective depending on what you're trying to paint. Okay, so let me just back, zoom back out of this so I can kind of see what I've got. Now, to me, this is what's so interesting about this background are these colors. I like looking at what some of the artists in the past have done because have you ever been to somebody's house and they've decorated in such a way and you think, oh, that's so pretty, I never would have thought to put that together. We all get to have, but it's, by the time, everybody gets their own kind of color palette going. And they'll stay with that for the rest of their lives if you don't expand from it, because you got kind of get your groove. You know, you wear kind of the clothes you wear, and you kind of you know pick the furniture you do, and you kind of do your thing. And we all get into that, even with art. So sometimes it's very nice to you know be inspired by what somebody else did. Say, well, that's a good idea. I never would have thought of that, but that's kind of neat. Okay. So see how this is sort of blending down into that. And, um, and it also was a very neat way to show off these flowers, here's I thought. Question. Here's a question for you from sure. Paul. Mm -hmm. What's the best weight of paper to have prints made of, of your paintings? What's the best way, what, what? Best weight. Of paper? Yeah. You know, when, you, when you have the paintings printed up? Well, I don't know. It depends. I mean, you've got to go to a reputable place. They're going to... They're going to paint, paint, paint it on. Um, they're going to print it on paper that's designed to hold the, sh the 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 ink. So you know that's really that's really a, probably a question you've got to ask them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, generally I don't put prints on paper. Um, uh, if I did, you know, I, you can even print. Believe it or not, you can print on watercolor paper. It's real pretty, heavy watercolor paper. You can run it through your printer. But if you're talking about the inks that your clay printers use are special, it's special inks. They're not just some, you know, something else. They're very, very special inks. All right, so there's our kind of our background, and which I think is kind of, isn't that interesting with this blue? And then you've got this dark here, and then you've got the table going this way. And this almost needs a little few more coats on that. So while this is drying, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the vase in, okay, while well, all this is drying. That's what we're going to do next. Now so his vase. That bottom half. Uh, this I'm not going to draw it. I'm just going to paint the vase in. See? Okay. So I'm going to zoom into the bottom. Yeah, half. zoom into the bottom half. Now, what we want is um, kind of a turquoise color, kind of white and uh, thalo blue, tiny bit of yellow maybe. Uh, you know, th that's pretty. And I'm going to just um, let's see. Let's put a little tiny bit of uh, brown in that. Kind of dirty that up just a hair. It's not quite that clean a color. Okay, I'm going to come up here like this. This is our vase. Now, as I get to the what right hand side, a little bit of thalo blue and brown make this a little darker. Going to darken this color up just a hair. Let's put some ultramarine blue with that too. I think that's this one here. Okay. So let's just come up here like that. Say so that's this half of the vase right here, like this. And bring it down into here like that. Try, try to go over the chalk. I gotta get some sort of layer on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe the brush off like that. No water. I'm going to use the side of it, and I'm just going to blend in this light color like that into the dark color. See that? Cool, huh? And learning how to blend objects. We've got a really good video on YouTube on how to blend objects. You know, like brown things. Knowing how to blend is really important. 
but one of the you know you do two wet colors and kind of use the side of your brush let's um I need that a little more turquoisey over here so I have a little bit more green to that and uh, want something a little bit more robin's egg turquoise to this and uh, kind of blend that in here not touching very hard Now he has black down here on his face, but I'm not going to do that yet. That's like later. And uh, let's just see if I can. I like this. This is one of the, the Sherpa art brushes. It's a number L8 silver. And it's got a very stiff um, uh, fiber to it. So that when you're trying to do some detail like this, see how beautifully that's just handling for me. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking about buying some brushes for yourself for the holidays, give yourself a little gift. I tell you what, I really like that new line of brushes from the Sherp Cinnamon. I, I like them a lot. They, they were a lot, a lot of thought went into them. Okay, and um, if you go to the brushguys.com, and it, we've got some of them, you know, which I've been I've been using silver brushes for years, and my favorite ones are the the angle ones. These these angle ones for details and stuff. You'll see me use these all the time particularly on small paintings. It's a 3 8 inch uh, short handled uh, angle brush, uh, ruby satin silver, um, maybe half inch, quarter inch. Those are my favorite. But you, you can get a 5% discount. No matter what brush you buy anywhere on that site, you can get a 5% discount if you type my name in Ginger Cook, all one word. And, um, and I like them because when I talk about that, they'll ship. They ship all over the world. They have one price for, you know, get out of the country which is good because um, I think that's very helpful. All right, so this is about as much as we can do with this nifty little vase right now. That has to dry, okay? And you see all of this is kind of wet. Now at this point, my brush is in water. I'm touching the bottom of my uh, container. I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna work a little bit more on my, I think this is set up enough where I'm gonna, this is my second layer with this little brush now on my background. Just go over this with some smaller brush strokes. Okay, just make sure that I've got um, there's almost a purple tone to this too. I almost feel it. This is a dazzling purple. I'm going to have fun with this too. Where did I put that color? If I put it anywhere. Did I put it somewhere? Dazzling purple? Mm. Mm. Ah. There. So maybe I can open it. There we go. I think I want a little feel of the purple to this. Kind of gingerize it a bit. Uh, just a little bit of that. A little bit of... Oh, that's nice. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Yeah, let's just add some of this color in here. A little bit of white. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Let's just... I want to brighten this up in a couple places. See, I'm really light now. Kind of dragging my brush on top of this. This acrylic's dry darker, so I'm sort of light, lighting it up here, and I'm going to come this way around my vase with these, kind of using the side of the brush now, these little brush strokes doing that. See, the vase is starting to pop out. We haven't put any flowers in. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? That's kind of neat. So anyway, somebody wrote me today and said that they're a member of my academy, and they said that I had said something very confusing, and I needed to clear it up. Okay, so that's, I say, I confuse people all the time. It's okay, I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll clear it up though. All right, so the question came up. The question came up. If in the, when we did the Van Gogh Starry Night painting last week, which we released last week, which was, it wasn't Starry Night, it was the Van Gogh Cafe Terrace, which we released. Do I have a picture of that somewhere, John? My painting, is that around here somewhere I can show you? Sure Last week was when we were on vacation. We were on vacation for two weeks, and so there were no live shows, so I re released all kinds of videos, okay? Uh, every Tuesday and Monday, you got a new video, and the apparently the favorite, the fan favorite was this one. Where was, well, we can, that's worthless. Where's the good one? Um, um, so the, um, the um, anyway... And I said, and we, I showed you how to grid this whole picture on. So if you wanted to make this bigger, you could. And 
I give up. Well, you know, I never know what we do with anything. I thought we had it up for photograph it. How, how can it be lost in one room? It's just, uh, it's not just, well, we took, you know, we didn't take it with us. We didn't, you know, you filmed it, you photographed it, you put it up somewhere. All right, I'm going to get some dark here, right by the vase here. It's just up here like this. Okay. Now, I don't want to put any dark on this vase till the blue's dry. And the reason being is that it would, the, the, the blue would lighten it too much. But I am going to put some dark streaks coming down in here like that. Like this. There we go. And then everything's going this way. And, uh, all right, that's about as much as we can do here. John's looking for the... Um, I can do this. Just kind of give this mouth a little curve like that. Did you find it? Not yet. Not yet. Interesting. Just extraordinary. Well, anyway, that that the question was, I like, chalkboard though. Oh man, the chalkboard. Well, that's helpful. I don't know. We just already drew the vase in without the chalkboard, but well, okay. Well, you know, <laughs> next time. Next time. So anyway, so what we've got going here, you guys, is um, so she's saying. Then I came up on on uh, on uh, Facebook the other day and talked about why it was okay to use traceables. So either are you supposed to grid? Are you supposed to do traceables? What's the deal? And my feeling is on this is that some people rely so heavily on traceables they won't give them. You know, this vase is really simple to draw. You saw that it was a tube with a couple of um, you know the uh, bulges on each side. Okay. A very, very simple vase to draw. So if you felt like you had to trace this picture on, that's kind of silly. That, I think, stifles you as an artist because you don't give yourself a chance. But if you're doing something very, very complicated, okay, it, even if you could grid it, it's all right to just, um, you know, take a picture of it, print it out, and trace it on. I mean, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. And because just the why, you know, uh, you know, 100 years ago, people... Here's the picture we're talking about. Um, Thank you. This cup blue, is that drawing? I don't know. Well, I don't so, you know, just because that's... Um, uh, here, let's just do this. These are my little tub of towels here. Hey, John's worried that I'll get blue paint on the picture. Well, we did yellow. get... Because it's, it's all yellow, so I'm going to clean that off real quick. Uh, don't you love these? <laughs> this just cleans your hands so quickly. You don't pay me to say this either. I just... I just share my good stuff. If I have something good, I'll share it. All right, so now, yep. Yeah. So here's what I'm talking about. I show you how, you don't know, have to trace this on. I show you how to, in the, in the video, how to actually fold some paper and grid this on. This is a really simple picture, though it looks complicated. But, you know, on the other hand, um, sometimes, you know, maybe you're going to do a portrait, and, boy, I, I'd say trace it on, man. Get it, get it right. Get, because, you know, you lower eye a little bit or you raise an ear and you got a whole other person. So maybe a por portrait would be a perfect example of something you might want to trace on. Nothing wrong with that. You use the tools we have, you know. We were, um, you know, the bicycle was a really great tool, but when the automobile came out, everybody's going, oh, well, you know, that's cheating. You should be bicycling or you're bicycling, you should be riding a horse. That's cheating. Since this thing is cheating, it's you got to keep keep up with our times that we live in. That's what I would say. Keep up with the times we're living in. All right. So this is what I've got here. And you saw I made that little dip here. And now it's time to um, to put some flowers. But I'm going to have to take a second and dry this. And so again, if you're just joining me, um, we're going to be doing we're doing this whole painting, which I think it hasn't taken us too long to do, has it? Um, thirty minutes. Well, that's not bad for 30, 30 minutes, minutes, right? Plus that's not bad. Minutes. So, again, so the question I want to say is, um, uh, yeah, you know, take advantage of it, but don't be so relying on it that you don't give your chance. You should be able to draw this on. And the other thing, too, is that sometimes you can just take a piece of paper and practice drawing something on the paper when you get it down, then trace it and put it on your picture. And you still did it, you know. But train your brain. That's what we're talking about. Train uh, your brain. Be, 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 excuse me. Yep. Over here. Would you like to talk about one of our art students' PACs before you do that? The elephant comes to mind? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about personal art coaching. So what I'm going to show is Wendy's first elephant. And what she did, did you, did you look at this, Ginger? Have you seen her post where she has the, all this series? 
Yeah, so w the first thing is that she had a picture that she was copying, okay? And, um, and so she did it exactly like the picture. And, um, and then she sent it to me for some art coaching. And I made some suggestions. Now, here's the thing. One of the fun things about copying somebody else's picture, I mean, I'll just tell you, one of the fun, really fun things about it is that if you don't like something, you can criticize it. Well, I, I would, wouldn't do that, or I'd leave that out. You know, when it's your own personal painting, you, could, you have a tendency to criticize everything. Well, was this a good idea? Wasn't it a good idea? So I think people tend to beat themselves up a little more when they're trying to come up with their own stuff. But again, um, in the case of our w Wendy, um, she sent it to me, and I, I actually went under the computer, and I made a sketch of what I thought might be an alternative to what I saw what that artist did, okay? And, um, and then John will go ahead and explain what she did while I'm drawing this, but this was really good. It's a great example of what personal art coaching is. And somebody, and before we go too far with that, somebody said, oh, I was going to, I'm a member, I don't, I'm, I'm worried about sending you anything because... Um, my, my stuff's so horrible, I'm, I'm ashamed to send it to you. That's why you send it to me, guys. I Don't might make wait. one suggestion. You know, if you've got like 50 horrible things, let's just say it's a hot mess, okay? Maybe I can find one thing in there to show you that if you did that, it would be slightly better. Maybe we won't fix the whole painting this time, but let's try to fix something. And then every time we fix a little something, you get better. I'm telling you what, you wouldn't believe some of the artists that are now really fantastic phenomenal artists you guys are all in awe of that are you know take classes with me you wouldn't believe some of the stuff they sent me when they first started you'll get better mm. all right so here we go i'm drawing right, you're muted okay so you can see here <clears throat> ginger took her image and then she wrote on it you know did different things that need to be done what's what's good what could you use some improvements uh, the biggest thing that really bothered Ginger, even though the photograph showed the rocks this way, it just, it was competing with the elephant. So Wendy took to heart what she said, and we're going to bring up Wendy's now. Her final is that. Notice how she totally changed the whole rock formation, and then now it really works. This is just fantastic, what she did, just from that little help. Just a little bit of help from Ginger saying, you know, get rid of the rocks, do something different. You know, Ginger would say, you can go to a grass bank, but Wendy said, oh, wait a minute, it's rocks, I want rocks. She created a nice rock formation. We have several lessons on doing rocks. I'm sure that's where Wendy learned how to do that skill, and she created this magnificent painting. Wendy, job well done. Uh, and Ginger, you're back. I'm going to turn Wendy's paintings off. Yeah, okay. that's cool. I mean, this is what we're talking about. And someone has said, you know, I wish you guys would just chat less and, and show us how to paint more. Well, this is what we do on our website, you guys. This is our art academy. And they're pure voice lessons with me telling you how to do stuff. There's not all this chat and stuff. It's just pure this. But when we get up on YouTube, because it's a live show, uh, John and I like to, you know, celebrate you too. Some of what you're doing, we like to talk about what's going on and, you know, it's 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 more you'll you'll get you'll get through it but you know there's more stuff going on and you know this is how we do it so but like when we were gone for instance we just shot pure videos of classes i mean if you want to kind of get, get a sense of what it might be like to take lessons well, we from us one, though, we right? had one semi-live one which we practiced we may do more of those i want to show you we this real quick i think this is dry this painting here was a release that we did two weeks ago and John, can you zoom in on that for I am me? I'm zooming in on it, boss. All right, this was done on this fabulous paper. This paper is uh, it's called um, Stillman Brin B I R N, the Alpha, Alpha series. And what's neat about it is that now look, it does not bleed through, it doesn't wrinkle. And this is we're, we're using gouache paint, which is an acrylic paint. And uh, we've encouraged some of you to try it. Um, it goes a long ways. It comes in a little kit like this. And what's neat about it, and I want to say this, what's really cool about this, if you're traveling, which we're trying to do more of, you want to do acrylic sketches. You know, you can't obviously do a big, long thing, if, you know, unless you're just moving overseas or something, right? So, and we figured out how to clean the palette, too. It's really just a little more <laughs> elbow room than, uh, elbow grease than John was doing. But here it comes with a little palette. It comes with all these colors. Here's our little business cards where we pass out. Little color mixing guide, couple tubes of white. Comes with some brushes. We threw in a few more of mine. 
but it's so lightweight, goes on the plane, doesn't seem to cause any problems. And right now, I think somebody said Jerry's had them on sale. Judy said they had them well, on they sale. They were at least last week. They, they were last week on sale. We couldn't. Well, I was going to order some more sets because um, th this is a great size to do. But I was going to really encourage you to watch this video. It's a really good one on clouds. I don't think anybody saw this. Maybe the plum th thumbnail just didn't catch your eye. But this is a marvelous one on just on water. Sort of a combination of acrylic and watercolor techniques on paper. Remember, your acrylics are a water media. You can go on canvas, you can go on paper with them, and yes, you can do this with regular acrylics too. So that was that one. And then the other one we did, the second day, we released, um, we released this one. Same paper, just a different one. We released this one, this painting. And um, again, this would be really pretty big. I just put, got paint on my fingers. How do I do these things? Okay, here out comes the tallies things. Okay, here we go. And, and you ask why are your fingers clean before I hand you a finished painting? I know. In fact, I was looking at something the other day that we, you know, painting I'd already finished. I see where we had accidentally got, I had actually gotten some paint, not we, me, <laughs> got some paint on it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, so we've had a chance for this to dry. We'll play what some art trivia those, too. What's the name of those books again? Pull one out. Flip yeah, it over. yeah. This is um, these are really cool. I would never have thought to buy these if Daniel Elliott from Jerry's Artorama hadn't given me the first one as a gift. There's Stillman and Byrne. Uh, this is the Delta series. This is going sideways, and this was the Alpha series. But what's really nice, I mean, you could use it for watercolor too. They're really nice, and they don't bleed through. Uh, very impressed with the paper on these. Okay, kind of your art journal. Okay. Something fun to do, and then and it won't take you so long that you know after you're on vacation. But we did film some more of uh, pictures, and while we were on vacation, we definitely filmed some more. And um, you know, just kind of wipe my hands a bit. Now, all right, so everything's dry enough. We're going to break this picture down a bit. We know that we've got a big red flower here. Okay, let's make a flower map. We got two flowers there. Now, how high up is this? I don't think I have quite the room he does. Maybe I made my vase a little taller. I might have. Well, too bad. I did. So, all right. So I know I've got, I'm going to just put a few X's where I think things are going to go. Got a little tiny yellow one there, but there's some, some stuff there. And there's something that's coming down this far. Then there's another big rose right here, kind of a rose, kind of an oval flower like this. We're coming out to the edge here. This is the top part. There's some sort of little leafy thing up here. Then we've got some stems coming this way. That looks like Mickey Mouse. Okay, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> and then, you know, I'm making a flower. The red flower, yellow flower, some stuff. Okay, so like I say, we're going to do kind of a, a shorter version of this, but I'll give you an idea of how we're going to paint this in. So you got to start with the colors underneath, which is what? I'm going to get this up closer where I can see it. Okay, so he what he did... Huh, okay, so I guess we could do it that way. We're, we'll just do it the way he did. All right, so we're going to take some cad red medium like that, right? And we're going to come up here like this, and we want the brush strokes kind of curving around like a, um, uh, let's just curve these around like this, like that, and they kind of spin around like a, I don't know, like a top or something. It's a feathery thing, right? This black in the middle. So that's my red flower. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say, here's my, other flower here, it's sort of in a, could be anything, I don't know what it is, but some sort of flower. We'll go with that flower. And if your flower looks a little different than his flower, how many different kinds of flowers are there, do you think? Thousands. So maybe yours is one of the others. Does it make sense to you? All right, so I got that flower and those two flowers. Now, underneath all this is some green stuff. So let's see, let's get out some more ultramarine blue. Want some sort of an ult, and here's a little yellow. Want some sort of a dark green, put a little purple with it. Dazzling purple. We've got some dark green. So we're going to come around here like this, even a little more purple. And we're going to a little bit more green. We're going to come up in here like this. And we basically want everything underneath here in this whole area to be dark. Now this is kind of key is to see where the, all the dark stuff is. Okay, and we're coming around the vase. It's dark this way. See the little brush strokes going this way. Now, as we sneak out, this is where it gets kind of interesting. We've got to kind of stop it about here and stop it about here. This is where we're going to change colors, but we're doing all this dark 
and I'm going to spin around under here. Maybe I'll shorten the vase this way a little bit here, like that. Okay, shorten this. Yeah, I'm going to shorten this vase quite a bit here, actually. There we go. Yeah. And then here, yeah, because the handles are not that far up. Okay. Um, now we're going to come around here with this dark, dark color coming this way. I know there's going to be some blue flowers. There's sort of a purpley blue flower here, but this is all dark this way. Doesn't quite touch the handle. And then it changes. Then it gets into this sort of moss green color, which we're going to put a lot of yellow in here and some white. Okay. And what, yeah, they're about like that. Okay. Kind of this mossy green color. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to make up some leaves. We're going to come in here like that. We're going to make up some leaves like that. We're going to make up some leaves like this. We're going to make up something here like that. Now, this is pretty dark, so this is, but remember, he was painting in oil, so that, that would account for the different colors in this. And then I'm going to, since I'm moving this up, and I'm going to come around here like this with this sort of darker color, and I'm going to suggest some sort of little foliage coming off into here, barely talking about it, using just the tip of this, making up something. I don't know what, just something. There. You're going, really? Going, yeah, well, listen, I didn't make this up. This is what he did. So then over here, now brush strokes change. We're kind of going to come down here this way and say that something happened here and kind of mix that into the dark. We got some of this green stuff coming this way. Okay, we're going to give it a home, this kind of green, lighter green stuff coming this way, next to that, and then uh, let's put a little more thalo blue with that, that's going to change the color here. There we go, a little more thalo blue in this, a little more thalo blue in this, okay. All right, now this is interesting to me, it's fun to see what people, you know, how something is sort of created, I mean, how did this get created? So now everything else is we're going to just have to make up some stems, okay? So I'm going to come down here like this and say, I know I've got a, a, some sort of stem here. This is an angle brush. I'm going to draw that in here, going toward the corner. Now I'm going to just do a couple of leaves like this, like that. There you go. I can do that. can make that one up. And again, I'm not trying to be exactly like his do. I want to get the feeling of this painting out exactly doing everything he did. So here's a little, I'll come next to it because I don't like that right there. Here's another little, oh, let's put some more thalo blue with that, a little white. Okay, same colors, just a little bit grayer. Let's come up here and say here's this sort of um, kind of loopy paint flower here. And there's one here like that. And I've got one kind of here, maybe. Okay, so you got any more of those? Nope, we're going to go back to green, add a little more yellow to that. Same, same colors, adding a little more yellow and purple. Nothing's changed. Now from here, I've got a little stem going this way. And I've got some little tiny leaves coming off of that. Kind of herringbone it, please. You know, not kind of stagger them. Okay, stagger the, your leaves coming off like that. Deb would like to know, Ginger, do you enjoy deciphering another artist's bouquet? I do, because it's fun. I mean, you know, this is a, you know, a lot more complicated. We're not putting every flower in. We'd, we'd be here for the next three weeks putting all the flowers in. But I think we can get the feel of this, make a really pretty painting without having to do all that, right? Don't you think so? So, like, I've got a, an idea that something's here with the chalk. So I'm going to come up here and then do just, just something like this and say that there's that. I don't know what that is. And then um, some little, well, we'll put some details later. Let's get a little dark here going. And where I did this one, I'm going to just got a, it's a little into the paint's gray and just made that a little darker right there. You know, okay. our uh, cruise on uh, in December, Miss Becky will be joining us. She already booked that one, December 1. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, so somebody said that December 3rd, we're, we're, we're leaving from Galveston for... Um, a week the Bahamas. for the for the Bahamas going to be the Bahamas for three three days for three days and that was a really inexpensive cruise. 
Because they dropped all the other ports. They, they dropped all the other ports they were going to see, and um, they, I think probably they had to. They probably were going to do others, but then you know there were these problems with the ports, with the hurricanes and stuff, so they had to drop some. Okay, so you see, I've kind of made a map here. Do you see what I've got? So far, you you're going not. I don't have a clue, Ginger. All right. So while meanwhile, back at the ranch, we'll come back and work on the vase while this is drying. Okay, sound good? Sounds perfect. I'm going to back on the vase. So we're back to the same colors we had before with the vase. This is layer two with a little bit of the yellow here, make that sort of turquoise color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to come up in here like this, brighten this vase up like that. This is never hurt to have a few layers of things. This could be straight up and down this um, handle here on the sides, okay? And I know I want this to be lighter. And I want this other side to be a little brighter, so I'm gonna add some turquoise blue to that and white. Thalo, in other words, thalo, gonna brighten this up. Need a little ultramarine blue in that too. There we go, this is the brush, probably more of a cobalt, but I don't happen to have that, so we're doing this. Okay, remember then I can take my finger and just sort of Spread that out like this, okay? Come on the inside of here and make this a little darker, kind of the shadow side of the, the, this, okay, like that. It's starting to feel good. Now, let's take a little bit of the black now. I can get away with that now. Here's a little bit of that black color, which is, I think he probably just used black. What we're going to use, and he's got it streaked in here at the bottom. That's why I like these angle brushes. And right around this edge, right here, like this, do to do to do. He's got that, it's a little bit wider here. The whole vase is not outlined in black, please notice that. There's just some dark down here at the bottom. And he's got this side with a little bit. And then on the inside of the handles, like right under here, do you see where you've got that glob and I'm pinching it? Right under here, he's got a little bit of a dark um, shadow underneath these. And, um, yeah, and we haven't done any highlights, so, um, and then we might want to put a little more of this dark color right here next to the vase if we didn't get that down very well, like that. And then he didn't put, now it's interesting to me, this artist, for some reason, does not put shadows under anything. We're not sure why he doesn't do that. But you, you know, know there has to be light because there's a, he has glares on the on the. Yeah, the vase. vase almost looks like it's a 3D coming off the canvas. So, you know what? We're sorry, darling, but I'm putting one, <laughs> right? So if the the vase is kind of the lights coming from this way, I'm going to suggest that it might be a little darker over here. Just a, just an idea, right? Then he's okay, and it's I know why he didn't because because of the way the vase was. The vase was actually ceramic and it was fired like this where it was black on the bottom but I still think it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of the dark ultramarine blue this way well he has kind of a little of that going off like that Mary, so, Mary has a question for you yeah I have a hard time painting what I see how can I get better or throw away the fear of perfection yeah throw away the fear of perfection just do the best you can it's a language you're gonna see more you know you know the wonderful part about going to another country where you don't speak the language is you can't read any of the signs now if you go anywhere in America there used to be billboards up everywhere not so much but you go anywhere the signs well are everywhere they're just screaming at you but when you're in another country you don't read the language signs mean nothing you don't even see them you might see some pictures but that's it so just keep in mind that uh, as you learn more, as you progress with your art, you'll see more. Just can't help it. So don't, don't, you know, see, do what you can and, and just keep going. That's what I would tell you. Now I'm going to take a, uh, this is a kind of a, this is one of the number nine. This was, what does she call this? A, um, Isn't that a Goldilocks one? Uh, no, this is a cat's tongue. Oh. And I'm going to take some, uh, some, ultra, some Payne's Gray. Put it on the brush and a dry brush and we'll wipe it off, okay? See me? Wipe it off. Now, I'm going to come down here like this and just barely touch this. And you see how I'm adding some patina to this uh, vase, making it look old. Do it again. Paint, wipe. Barely touch it like the sunburn. See how I'm adding these kind of, he had that. See these little streaky things here? Yeah, okay. We haven't put the highlights on yet, but this is what we did. All right, that's all I'm doing to the vase. Looks good, though, doesn't it? Could have done a little bit of that even to the side here. You can do this. You can. This is called dry brushing, where you kind of take the brush and go up and down and add some texture. 
to stuff like that. You know, if you didn't get quite enough streaks in your stuff. All right, that's going in water. We Face, we'll get some highlights later. All right, moving on. Um, what are we doing next? Oh, yeah, something. All right, so I think just to help, just for my thoughts, I'm going to take a little bit of this dark color, this paint's gray, and I'm going to put it in the center of this flower here, like that. There it is. That was a, a nice dark center. And... Um, then I'm going to take some brown, and I'm going to come up here, and he's got some sort of little brown flowers here, kind of brown with some Payne's gray, maybe. Well, let's put some cad red medium with it. That'd be good. Brown. Yeah, that's good. Maybe cad red medium and Payne's gray would make a kind of a reddish brown kind of flower. I don't know what these are, but I'm going to put a few. That's two. Yeah, I'm going to put a few, and then I've got, I've got some over here. What are, we got something here. What, what is that? Something smaller up here, maybe? Okay, he's got a little tiny thing up there, whatever, right? So we're going to add those. This man put more stuff. I mean, this is the most elaborate flower arrangement. Good grief. All right, so I'm throwing those in. For me, stuff like this makes more sense when I've had a chance to um, kind, of, kind of make a map of what we're painting. All right, so here's some purple, which we had out somewhere. We did, didn't we? Yeah, so anyway, don't beat yourself up about painting. It, it, you get better. I get, you know, you see more the more you do it, the more you see it, and then you get the hand-eye coordination. There's no right age. You know, somebody wrote me and said, well, you know, I'm in my 60s. Oh, can I ever learn anything? Of course, you can learn anything. Um, have I ever given you my great example about, um, about bombs? All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about it. We're, 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 just imagine with me for a minute. We are in a building, and uh, some chairs come in, and they tie us up to chairs, and they put bombs under our chairs that are set on a timer. But somebody had the presence of mind you know, to get out their cell phone, and with their lips, somehow they dialed for help. And they dialed, they said, please help, we've been, so please send the bomb squad. Now just follow my scenario for a minute. And then who shows up are these um, two kids, about eight, ten. They walk in and they got all the little tools and they're the little, you know. How, how old were these youngsters? Eight, eight ten. And they come in and they're going to, they look at, they have their tools, they look at the bombs under the chair and all the wires and the clock and they go, you know what, you're screwed. We're leaving. <laughs> anyway, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are the adults? Where are the adults? Send the adults back, okay? Well, this is all, most of the decisions that every one of us made, most of our decisions about what we, whether we were good at painting or whether we had music ability, or, we made the 8 or 10-year-old in us made. And you wouldn't listen to an 8 or 10-year-old to, to make any kind of these deep, dark decisions, would you? And yet... And yet, here we go, you listen to the 8 or 10 year old in yourself that said, I suck as an artist, or I don't draw, or whatever you said, the, whatever story you told yourself at that time, or maybe a big sister told you, or a teacher. Boy, teachers have done, are so responsible for more, more people thinking they suck as artists, right? And um, I'll tell you of something I read recently. It was called the talent quota, quote, quote, I think it's called. And what they did was they were doing these studies. I'm just doing a little purple here. What they did was they discovered that um, the kid that thought that was told, oh, you're a great tennis player, or you're great this, or you're great that, you're a great artist, you're this, you know. If everybody told them that when they were younger, this, this, was, this one's a prodigy, look at that, look at that kid. They so got to believing the myth that they were afraid to make any mistakes so by the time they got to be 16 or 17, they never got better than what they had shown because they were afraid that people wouldn't value what they did anymore. Where the kid that wasn't very good at it but just wished they were a good tennis player, wished they were a good artist, that kid okay, um, would surpass, by the time they got to college, they were better than the prodigy, often. And so... It's really, a lot of it's about just focus and desire to learn something, less about talent. This talent myth, we've got to get, 
it's, it's nice, uh, talent, you know, if you have an interest, something's easier to do. Um, it's, it's nice to have talent, but boy, I'll tell you what, it's very nice to, um, to just focus on something and have the pleasure and the discovery of learning you can do it. It's a thrill. It's a real thrill t to know you can paint something well. Absolutely. Let me get out some more red paint. This is some um, Batiste Deep Scarlet. If you had some regular red, that would be good too. I just did, there, There's some better red here. I'm going to start. This is my next coat of red. It's going to come around here. Look at the difference. I'm going to kind of elongate these now. See that? Closer toward the vase as I go here, like this. Let's say I want this to be brighter, right? Like this. Kind of make this circle a little smaller, and I'll put a, I'll add that to a little bit of blue. Make like a burgundy color, like one percent. Make this a little darker. This side is slightly sh in the shade shadows. Okay, like that. So there's that nice oh, puffy flower. Nice feed. We lost the feed? Yep. Let me stop the stream. Stop painting for a second if you would. Yep. Okay. We're going to start starting back up. We haven't got it yet. Just hang in there. Hang in there. Sure. For those of you that are watching this recorded, it's, uh, we're waiting for the stream to get back on YouTube for our live audience. Okay, I think we're back. I'm back. Hi, we're back. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We haven't done anything. I put out some yellow oxide because we're moving on with the flowers. Oh, this is kind of fun. Isn't it kind of an adventure? I mean, I just, you know, like making this up as we go. Let's see. What else do I need here? A little burnt sienna kind of out of that color. What's this color? That's not, you ain't it. What are you? Okay. A little burnt sienna. Okay. All right. Good. Now, that what? Really, that really kills the audience. Would the audience all leave because we lost them? Did we lose everybody? Uh, we lost 140 of them. Uh oh, too bad. Uh oh, so sad. All right, so it's a little yellow oxide burnt sienna. See that? Okay, now we're going to just do a little flower like this. Okay, another one right here. This little kind of almost like a. Oh, this, this is a nice color, isn't it? Look at that. Aren't these kind of cute? Like it's already looking, looking better already, isn't it? All right, let's put something on here, this imaginary stem that we just did here. Put some of these on here like this. He had a lot of friends. It's a yellow, fun with this, a little yellow oxide, a little yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. I think he had a little flower going this way. Sometimes it's important to change the direction of your flowers, have them face a different direction. This one's kind of facing sideways. Oh, here's a nice big one right here. Let's just put one up here like that. That's a good one. I don't understand why we lose that stream. We don't know. And here's another one up here like that. This one I'm going to do a little bit of white and yellow because we need to get that one a brighter orange. We're going to have to lighten this one up a bit to make it darker. I'm going to brighten this one up right here. Wouldn't normally be that bright, but we need to do that because yellow is one of those colors where... Okay, so I've got this, and we've got some little tiny yellow d dots up here like this. That, maybe something here. Do, 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 do. What are these? Yeah, this is cute. Okay, just adding some colors. So we're getting there, right? And then there was, this is pretty dark. Is that dry? Yeah, there was a nice yellow one, kind of yellow oxide one right here coming off of there. Now, it's going over black, so it's not going to want to do well. I don't, don't, don't think that black is as dry as I'd like it, but I'll just add a little more thicker paint like that. Just do do that. Rachel That's would like right to know, there. just wondering, what kind of medium could I add to give this some texture? Oh, gosh. You know, one thing, my favorite thing, if you can get it, go to go to Jerry's and uh, Artorama and get um, Matisse Impasto Medium. Impasto Medium. That, I, I, no one makes anything like it. It, um, what it does is that, because what happens is the reason your acrylics dry flat is if you use too much water, the water evaporates, they go very flat. You can, you can add a light gel too, like a, like a very light gel and, and make them a little thicker because the gel will, will, will give it some texture. But the impasta medium is really nice to paint with, I gotta tell you, it's really nice. All right, so we need another little kind of a flower here and we're putting this on fairly thick. Another little 
flower like that right there. Putting this one on, that's kind of cute. Uh, let's just start here with a little bit of yellow around the vase like that. Okay, on the edge of the vase. Now, okay, so I need some more of those, but let's take a little bit of cad red medium and a little bit of yellow. And um, let's get some orange in some of these flowers here like this. Let's just tap in while we can. Let's tap in some orange on these. Maybe on the... Oh, I love that color. Left-hand side. We need... We need, to, we need to jazz these up a bit. Okay, there we go. That's our next layer. But people, you know, you got to, um, let's just get this a little thicker. We need some, some sort of brighter orange flower here, like that. There you go. Some of these are going to be brighter than others. Nina would like to know, would an Indian yellow flower go over the black? I don't know. See, if it doesn't, you'll know. Might, might not. Hard to say. Uh, white, yellow always paints nicely over white. You can always paint it white and then repaint and then put it. put the yellow back on top. Put the yellow back on top. Always do that. There's a little bit of this color in here. So we're starting to starting to bring more flowers over. Now down in here, he's got some sort of a, uh, let's see, where's some white and orange. He's got some sort of little um, flower like this. It's just tapped in like in a, like a little cone shape. Just to see them. Just you don't want to mix the colors too great. Let the let the paint just to get a little orange, get a little white on your brush. You don't want to mix the flowers too much because that way um, the color. See, and then there's another one right here. Let's make it a little more red with that one. There, see, you just tap this in here like that. There's oh, another little flower it. dropping down like that. Julie's asking, I want to know if Ginger has ever worked with the Golden Open Acrylics. I do. I have. I have. They're all right. They're very flat. They really dry very flat. Uh, you can get some mediums to put in them, but they really dry very flat. So this is sort of a, this flower up here is sort of a combination of these two colors. We've got something up here like this that's just, I don't know what this is. This is growing up here like that. Some sort of little red flower up here like that. Something in here. So we're starting to add more flowers. This is where you can get the idea of what something like this does and then kind of make it up as you go. It's kind of fun. All right, so we've got some leaves here, but maybe we want to put something in here like that, kind of start layering some more flowers like that. What else do I got? Oh, yeah, this is pretty. Let's get some more colors going here. Now, here's a little bit of this is sort of nice. Here's some almost some of the, the uh, burnt sienna color with a little bit of the orange on our brush. And we're just adding some little flowers up here into the background. And you barely see them up here like that. Same thing here. You're barely seeing them. We're just putting some up here like this. I'm just almost little brush strokes to kind of, that's interesting too. Okay, what else we got? Something up here like that. Haven't put any of the white ones in yet. There's some really pretty white ones, and we really haven't got the got the good layers of the red yet either. You gotta really get the. Is that water? Yeah. No. Got. We're starting to do a little thicker now. There's a nice deep bright red right here. Red's one of those colors where sometimes you have to do three or four coats to get it to really show up. That little bright flower there. The same thing here. And then I see where the, he's got some white on the inside of this one for about 9 o'clock to about uh, 5 around that circle. There's a little bit of white right there. So I'm just trying to figure out what I can do without... I'm just keeping, I'm keeping adding flowers. Now he's got some burgundy ones. This is where if you had a lizard crimson, that would be good. A lizard crimson would be a great color. You can take magenta. Whenever you're thinking about flowers, you can always take magenta and add it to red, and you can get an interesting color like that. Now, that's pretty. Now, we have some, some red flowers up in here like this. That some of them may have um, disappeared. I think I want to do some darker ones here. I'm going to say I've got something dark here growing. And around this one here. And don't be afraid to go right over a leaf that you put in. 
Don't be afraid of that. Now we're going to take some dark, which is ultramarine blue and maybe some black. And we're going to put a dark base on those. Like that. I'm just going to put a dark base on those. He had quite a few dark areas of flowers in his picture, which made it very interesting. And he's got something dark kind of next to here like that, too. Kind of separates that flower out. Something dark here. Okay. All right, so we'll keep going. Uh, while we're doing this, you see me putting in flowers. I'm going to play some trivia. John, it's number five. It's our art trivia game. I'm going to do that. Oh, art trivia. That's a how. Yeah. And do I, I have any questions while you're looking for that? I can answer while this is going on. Yeah, somebody wants to know about the uh, cruise that you seem to have mentioned that we won. Oh, you! Oh, yeah, we want How a cruise. Did that happen? They want we, more details. We want a, We want a cruise. I lost my controller. Okay. Well, they've got a thing. You know what I mean, John? John is the. Um, what I love about John is that uh, one of the things I love about John, but one of the things I love about John is that he's very analytical. Okay. So what he's doing, you know, oftentimes, and we're making a little burgundy color here as I'm telling you this, right? What he, what he does sometimes is he'll, he'll analyze what we're doing and uh, try to come up with a more, you know, figure out how something works, in other words, okay? That's his thing. He loves to see how things, very interested in seeing how things work. For instance, we took a tour, uh, he took a, actually took a tour of the ship and Saw the engine, you know, some of that stuff. You got, got to see the bridge and had his got picture the taken. Behind the scenes. With, behind the scenes. I didn't have any interest in seeing that at all. It's a ship it's going somewhere. I trust that it's going to go somewhere where I want to go, and I don't need to see the engines to believe it's going. I couldn't care less. But, you know, but John likes all that stuff. So they've got all, all ships come with a casino. And there was this one particular slot machine that um, uh, you could stop. You could, you could just push it, and it would just start rolling around, but you could also stop it. And he noticed that when it stopped in certain areas, it paid. And, in, and for, for a cruise, when you're, if, if you get so many points, you get a free cruise, if you can get so many points. So um, the idea is if you, know, if you can win enough, you can get it basically, or spend enough money, I suppose. You could be losing or winning, but winning's better, right? Always that, better. That better. See, the idea is to win, not lose. Um, we put a little purple in this flower now. I think that black's a little dull, right? Look at what that purple did. Yeah, a little dodgy purple over some of this black. Now look what that's doing. Just a few little dots of that. Really how pop that those flowers up. Okay. So anyway, so basically John figured out the two of us sat there and sat down on this one machine, and he'd say, and I, I'd be doing. Can you see my hand? I'd be doing. I I I. Start the reel and stop it. Start the reel and stop it. Start the reel and stop it. He'd say, stop. Now, count to two and stop it. And then let it go and stop it. And anyway, we ended up, it took us two weeks, but we ended up with a um, enough points to get a free, to win a free cruise, which we think is kind of cool. You know, and some people might not think so, but John and I thought it was just cool as could be. We like free. We like free. It's a little yellow oxide. I want a little phthalo blue in this, a little bit of black. I want some green, a little bit of yellow. We, we, we need some more greens here, you guys. All right, so let's come on up here now. And we can connect some of these flowers with some greens. It's our next layer of lighter greens here. We've got we to gotta connect something that explain wh why these flowers are all together. Okay? So now we're going to start putting in some willy-nilly greens. To kind of make that sense and some greens up here in the center maybe pop some more colors on some of our little leaves up here <laughs> want something up here like some sort of little green something up here like that something up on this one this is our next layer see that okay and, and so anyway we're very ex we were extremely excited about that. We thought that was really cool. And um, also we were able to do a lot of filming on the ship. We saw some really interesting uh, ports and saw lots of things that make great paintings. Uh, some of you met Lisa, the lady we met in, um, uh, you saw the video I shot of Lisa 
uh, you know, the, had the art gallery, and I thought it was interesting. You know, being an artist and having an art gallery is really tough. You either one or the other. It's, uh, people always say, well, I, I, I don't want to pay an art gallery 75 or 50 percent of my money. So uh, why should I give them their money, that money? Because otherwise you're sitting all day in your own gallery and paying the rent and paying people and paying for the phone and paying all this. And you may not sell a painting for a month. And then what? You still owe the rent. So these art galleries, they take a risk on you when they put, um, they put, they, when they, when you put your art in there, we're going to get some turquoisey blue colors in here now. When you put your art in, an art gallery, they are taking a chance on you that your art may sell. Okay? And if it doesn't sell, they still had to pay the rent. Now, see, new layers of color here. Do you see that? And I'm go going fairly thick. And so there, so there's nothing, you know, never begrudge an art gallery their money. But I, I wanted you to see Lisa because I was amazed. She has to close, to, you know, because I know it, how hard it is you, you to be able to run a gallery and paint and that's really tricky so she she does it about half the year hire someone else to be there um the other times okay i mean i think that's interesting this is our next layers of color see that see right we had to go over this yellow again it's just going to disappear into your picture otherwise right but we're hey, getting I our got flowers a for you yeah where's our question now sorry what is the name of the petting painting technique Favored by Jackson Pollock that consists of letting a paintbrush drop its paint onto the canvas. Dripping, pouring, or living? What is the name of the painting technique favored by Jackson Pollock that consists of letting a paintbrush drop its paint onto the canvas? Dripping, pouring, or living? Do we have any answers? Anybody? What? Anybody? Anybody uh, saying anything? We got no, anybody? Nobody saying anything yet. We're delayed like five hours. Are we? Well, then don't sing. Don't sing. Don't sing. No, we have to sing. No, we See, don't. We're trying to get to fifty thousand. We're going to threaten to sing if you guys don't get us to fifty thousand. No, by don't the end just of the quit year. watching completely. Don't sing, honey. You're just going to scare everybody away. Oh no, they, they, they would. They would definitely sign up to have us stop singing. Okay, um, they're starting to come in. Gail says dripping. Kim Sim or Kim Sung, according to you, is dripping. Zoe is dripping. Zoe is pouring. Speedy sweetheart is dripping. Teresa is dripping, dripping, Wendy's dripping, Living's dripping. Oh, we have a living. Vicky's living. What was the last one, John? Couldn't hear you. Living. Dripping, pouring, or living. LOL, don't sing. Hey, come on, Kim Sam. Kathleen is dripping. Mary's dripping. Peggy's dripping. LOL, don't sing. Hey, come on, guys. Dripping from Barbara. Zoe, ha ha. Lori's going living, Deborah's dripping, Giovanni's living, Teresa says sing. Thank you, I have a supporter. One supporter. That's it. What's your first clue? I'm trying to get to 50,000 by the end of the year, and I figured if I sing, they would sign up to get me to shut up. You think so? Think Do you that think that's how that's worse? I, I, I somehow suspect that may not be the result you want, but, you know, it could be wrong. You could be. You never know. All right, Miss Artist. Yeah. Are what is you the talking name? To, you talking the, to you what? talking to me? I am talking to you. Hey, you you talking to me? I'm talking to you, fearless leader. What is the name of the t painting technique favored by Jackson Pollock that consists of letting a paintbrush drop its paint onto the canvas, dripping, pouring, or living? Pouring. Ooh, we have stumped the artist. Really? It is dripping. Really? I watched him do it. It looks to me like he just dumped it. Yeah, that's dripping. Okay, for those of you who guess dripping, you give yourself, what, how, how many points am I giving him now? 100,000? Let's give him 100,000 a day. We're back. We give 100,000 points if you're correct. If you're wrong, minus 50,000. Do you see where I put in this little light color, this reflected light oh, on I the like outside that. of that? See how that popped the base? What, you, you see that? Now I'm going to take a little white, put it on my paintbrush, wipe it off, right? Now here's the white. 
under here. I want you to see how we're doing this. Here's the white, just a just a little white here, and then wipe it off. There's a little bit of light right here on this sh shoulder here, a little bit right there. You get this little reflected light. Dry brushed. <laughs> he dry brushed. Let's need a new rag, John. Can you hand me some new cloths? I'm absolutely. Just, you know, I'm okay. just sitting here doing absolutely nothing. Well, I've about. noticed that. I've noticed that. So I'm just sitting there. Okay, so I'm going to hold this real, barely touch it. Very touch. See how I'm letting the texture of the canvas make the light highlight. Did you guys see that? There you go, on the base right there. Thank you. I just need a brand new clean one. Okay, and then down here we're going to do another one. Just dry, hold it real flat, barely touch it, and let it catch the surface of the... Speaking of brand new, clear one. There, just catch the surface like that. Just, there you go, like this. Barely touch it. There you go. There you go. And then maybe a little one right here. A little bit of paint. Always wipe it on, wipe it off. Okay, that's too much right there, so just kind of smudge that out. Um, a little bit down here, too. Just put a little bit right down here at the bottom. And uh, then I'll have to erase the chalk. That's the trick. But you're seeing that the light here you're seeing is the chalk. Let me take... Um, let me get this dark down here a little bit here, because you don't want to see the chalk. I want this dark color on the bottom of the vase. Okay, definitely do not want to see the chalk here. And then here's the blue on this side. Otherwise, you want to erase that chalk later when everything dries. Okay? All right, so that's looking pretty fine with the vase. Now, what kind of makes this work is he's got these light green ones. Um, you know, he's got some stems that go to a few places. You know, every once in a while you can, you know, put something. Um, I feel like we could do better with the, um, with the purple flower right here. Let's take that in a little magenta maybe with the purple. All right, let's see what we got here. Is that, where'd the magenta go? Isn't that funny when you put paint out and then you don't see it anymore? Where'd the magenta go? Here. Let's put some up there. Now, a little magenta and purple and white. Okay, that's what I want. Oh, that's pretty. Right there. I want that on this flower right here. Brighten that up just a hair on this one. A couple of petals, right like that. There we go. Remember, your acrylics are drying darker, so you may have to go back over and touch something up. And uh, that's, that's the key here. Is it, um, let's take a little bit of white here, which we've got a new one, need a new place for white. And um, take a little bit of blue, light blue, like that. Maybe some ultramarine blue would be better than the thalo. Remember, I need something light up here, so I'm going to put that right here. That's the top of this flower, but the darker in the center. And right here, maybe something here like that. See, I want that flower to show up, and it wasn't. So there you go. So something like that. That's kind of cool. Hey, I do want to remind people or mention we have an auction going on some of Ginger's, some of Ginger's original artwork because the studio is getting overrun with paintings. Uh, mm -hmm. When is that going on, John? It started now. John started our auction? Right have... there's a link to the auction. The bear just put it in. Nice going, Sammy. We have some originals up there right now. There's a dozen. I have another, like, 30 to put up and more. We have the puzzles. We found some more puzzles in the closet and a couple other things we're going to be throwing up. So get your holiday shopping in early. Yeah, and that, we're not going to run these for weeks either. This is a, there's this is a the, two-weeker. The, the, huh? two week. Two weeks. It's a two-week auction. If we put a painting up, we're staggering them. We were putting everything up at once, and then people wanted to buy one or two, and they couldn't catch couldn't it. So watch we at once. couldn't watch everything. So we're putting them up in little batches, so that you can, you know, you can stagger them. So it's two weeks from today, the auctions will be over, and uh, which we think they, they each have an, an, an ending date. You'll see. The they each have an ending date, and here's the thing about it. Also, we we didn't we didn't get this in on time last time. You know, particularly with the holidays, it's nice to be able to, you know, do something in payment. So you have the option of paying it all at once when you when you win it, or to. Um, we have a two month and three month installment plan. Yeah, two no three. interest. 
Yeah, no installment plan. The, the, the nothing gets shipped until it's paid for. We will, we will um, do it. So we will, you know, we'll make sure that you know it gets out to you. Okay. And all right. So those are there's the yellow. Now what we need to do is do some white on here. And the thing is that white, it, the, his white is pretty pure. He's got a little bit of a yellow something right there, which is pretty in that purple next to that purple. Isn't that pretty? Currently, we have 296 thumbs up. Come on, people. Really? Let's get 300 thumbs up. There's 344 people on there, so somebody didn't give us a thumbs up. We, All right. Okay, so, I promise I won't sing anymore if you give a thumbs up. If that's what it takes. No singing, John. Oh. All right, so now we need a little bit of light right here on the edge of this flower. I'm just seeing just a couple little light strokes. You'll see me do that. I'll put paint on the brush uh, and I'll wipe it off. All right, I'm going to go in buffering. here. buffering. Okay. Hold it. Buffering, buffering, let you know we're back. It says we're live again, but Sammy's just still spinning, so go slow. Okay, okay. just kind of we're redoing back. the highlights on the vase and just around the vase like that. I'm just trying to do the highlights again, kind of lost one right there on our vase. All right, what we got to do is do something real small. So we're using the corner of the, of the, um, oh, let's, I need a different brush. Hang on a second. All right, here, we need some green right up in here, okay? So I'm going to make some kind of green color with a little bit of white, okay? And I need to, I need some green right up in here. I'm just going to use the side of the brush like that, some sort of light green. I had some leaves here, but we got to just do some green, okay? Like that. Okay, good enough. Now, now, maybe I can make this work. Here's some white. Up here, making these little tiny dots. We'll all talk about things while we're doing it. We'll tell you about our trip while making these. While we're watching grass grow, while Ginger makes these little tiny dots with the, just the corner of the brush. And they're getting bigger as they go back, and I keep getting up. So anyway, the first, we flew up to New Jersey, and we had to get up. We had to leave the house at 4 in the morning to get to the airport in time for the plane to take off at 6.30. Half of Houston was, um, was on this. Uh, I swear that, that most of the ship was Houston because the, it all came back. The ship came back to Galveston, which is, you know, the Houston's port. So we had a lot of Houstonians on there. There were, it was interesting. It's very fun, not, not to say anything bad about kids, but there was only 10 kids on the ship. 11. 11. You can't, John counted, right? 11. But there were, you barely saw them, right? Barely. And, and sometimes in the summertime, kids can, under 12 can sail for free. And those are fun if you're the parent with one of the kids and don't want to pay for a babysitter. You see them with strollers no, and all over. Let's just say that we've done the kid thing and we're over the kid thing. Um, but they have all kinds of activities. Uh, ships that cater to kids have all kinds of activities for them to do, all right? But we, we, we did get up, it was very nice, and we got up to New York, and I'm going to just, uh, it's been a long time since I've flown anywhere in an airplane, I don't mind telling you that, and um, at least about five, six years, and they took out the little pocket in front of the seat to put your stuff, okay, this isn't going to be pure white now here, that's a little bit darker, they took out the little pockety things. So, I mean, it was very cramped. It was uh, really like flying in a closet. I mean, I'm glad we got up there, but it was, it was a challenge. Three hours, about as much as I was willing to do with this stuff. Anyway, so we, we got up there, and um, the Royal Caribbean is the, the, the cruise line that we like, and they took us right there. They had someone meet us there with little signs that said who they were, and we got right to the port. Very nice. And so we were on the ship by about noon, which was cool. And uh, now I've got a little bit of purple and white going on here, too, just toward the center. It's a little bit brighter here on the outside, and it's a bit lighter here. Now we need some sort of a little white flower right here that's coming in here. It's going to sneak in this way, wipe the brush, come back again, gets reloaded. Remember, that you're, when you're painting with acrylics, you're overlapping and you're layering, okay? So keep that in mind when you're painting things. Uh, don't say, well, I put a flower there. You know, we'll move it, you know. I'm going to overlap here. He's got these little white, tiny little white kind of, they almost look like, what kind of baby's breath? I don't think it is. It's too tightly packed for baby's breath. 
Well, anyway, so we did that, and um, so then we we went through you know New York Harbor, okay, and we went right by the Statue of of Liberty, and the, it was really inspiring, really neat, right by the Statue of Liberty. All right, so I'm going to put this put our picture back here. Now, right up here. Above this flower is a nice white one, and it's um it's a different kind of flower. It's kind of over this one. There's one right here. It's kind of next to this one. Maybe it was above that yellow one, but oh well. This is where I stuck it. Okay, there's a nice little white flower there. And um, yeah, right next to this red one, there's another white one, like this. And uh, so any, any, any thoughts on, you want to say anything about the trip, John, that you thought was fun? Well, one thing about the airplane ride is basically you need to cut off your legs and put them in the overhead because there is absolutely no leg room. And, and to fly first class was like four times the price. It's ridiculous. And nobody's flying first class. People, you know, well, obviously we're not doing that, but, but yeah, it was very, um, very cramped. Very, very cramped. But Just, I tell you, the way the Royal Caribbean people got us onto the boat, from the airline, they had people there waiting. We got a nice air-conditioned bus, took a little tour of Jersey as we went over to the port. They're very well organized. Now, the other thing, though, as we were checking in, you did, did you mention this, our little guy I, that checked us in? No, I didn't mention because I didn't we, want to say anything negative. I mean, you know, we're not trying to say negative things here. Oh, right? okay. Well, we won't talk about that then. No. No. But, um, no, we're not going to talk about her. We're just going to write a scathing letter. <laughs> Royal Caribbean about so her. So enough said on that. The, but, actual, uh, the actual ship was fantastic. The, uh, the, the crew all worked together. And it, was, it was a real big family. And it's a smaller ship. It was a 2,000-passenger ship. You had about, uh, I think it was 900 crew member, which is smaller. We've been on the Allure of the Sea, which was, what, six, 7,000 passenger? Mm -hmm. Just huge. That was... That's the one that had trees growing in the middle. You had a central park. You had outdoors. You had birds. Well, at least you had the bird sound. I don't think we had any birds there. But that was a cool one. All right. Now, he didn't do it. He's got all his flowers over on this side. I'm, I, you see how they've sort of disappeared? I'm almost on my second layer of little white ones because that green was was wet. But I need to brighten up some of these right here. He's got a couple flowers here. He's got this nice one here. He's got this one. I need another one. I'm putting one right here. He didn't put it, but I'm putting one. I feel balanced. I feel like I need something right there. Yeah, that feels better. And then for me, I need something right there. You know what I mean? And all the flowers are over here, the white ones. I need something up there. So, you know, you may not like it, but this is where I'm putting mine. I'm putting another one of these things. If I was doing this flower arrangement, I wouldn't just have them there. Let me rinse the brushes. It's picking up a lot of blue. We're going to kind of fill this in. Yeah, no, it was really fun. We met some very nice people. You know, it's always very friendly. And, you know, we were able to paint a little bit, set up our paints and, you know, that's the, you know, and be able to do that. And I'll tell you why I liked about that was that we were trying to figure, not only were we able to film some lessons, but, um, you know, we were able to take pictures that were very helpful. And, um, our goal is to be able to, we'd love it if people wanted to come and, and play. Not that we could guarantee that if the weather's bad, no one's painting, right? So it's not like we're offering, you know, we're saying come and we'll teach you or something. But if you guys wanted to come and watch us and be, uh, you know, film an art lesson or maybe even be part of the art lesson that we film, I'd let you get in there and say something. You know, we'll give you a cruise schedule of when we think we might be able to go back again and do stuff like that because we think that's really would be really fun to do. Now, don't you think that's a little better up there with that little bit of white up there? They kind of balance that out a little bit. Now we're going to come back with some some of these other flowers and, and start adding some more of the gold again. Because, again, acrylics dry darker. This is your next layers. This kind of thing takes patience. We're not trying to, you know, do every little flower he ever did. But it doesn't hurt to, you know, again, brighten up some of these flowers. Um, again, here's our yellow. Now maybe we're going to brighten up this side. I'm just almost going into pure color here. Um, so that was really nice. Let's see what else. Um, 
Oh, what else did we do? That was neat. Oh, um. What was John? You're not helping me here. I'm I'm concentrating on this and trying to tell people what we were doing. That was neat. Um, I'm sorry. I was talking and chatting on the chat. <laughs> okay, so you you just let me just die out here, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I'm sorry. You usually have the gifts of gab. Are, are yeah, you, well, you know what? This takes a lot of concentration. This it little does. painting there's a takes lot of a colors huge. In there's here. a lot of colors in here. This pattern is. It, did you ever put a puzzle together? Oh, that's something they had on the ship. Yeah, what were they doing with that? They had a card table set up with a puzzle, and passengers would come by and just do the puzzle. It was really so nice. It was just and then they had people. They had, uh, you know, John and I don't know, are the least musically inclined, you guys. We know nothing no, about music. No, I think my, my singing's coming along quite well. Yeah, so anyway, um, they had this game you could play that invited the passengers. They had more interaction with the passengers than any ship they've ever been on. And it was the, they would play, um, they would play a song, and if you knew the song, you could come up to the microphone and sing it, and you won a prize. And it was so funny, because I met most of the people probably were over 55 that were on this particular cruise, I would oh, say, right? Yeah. I'd say most, about 70%, right? And they kept like playing 90%. these songs, and nobody knew them. And this girl was getting so upset. She goes, well, surely you know this one. And it's not that we hadn't heard of it, but didn't necessarily know the words, right? And, um, and she goes, well, what about this one? Surely you guys know this one, okay? And we're going, no. And well, what about this one? Oh, I want to make this one bigger. What's some bright red here? Um, let's start getting some red in here now. See, we're just um, going to start adding some red flowers here like that. See, it's coming along, isn't it? So anyway, so they the finally ended up. It was really, it was fun to watch. We just sat up there. We, you know, John and I, of course, didn't volunteer to sing anything, but we watched why other people did, which was kind of neat. Okay, want this really bright. Here's some cad red orange light. Uh, what do you think, um, what's her name? The, the MC was. She was in her late 20s, early 30s, maybe? Yeah, she was a professional comedian and um, had said it had not. Um, she gave that up because there's so much backstabbing. She said it was backstabbing. I thought that was interesting, her take yeah. on what it was like. This is cad red orange light, okay? Look what it did for that flower and this other one, huh? Maybe a few little drops of this. Let's see, something here, and then I need something dark in the middle, a little purple here, right in the middle here, like that. There you go, in the middle of that one. That's pretty. And let's see, what else could we do to this while we're playing? Okay. Um, I'm just putting in... Jennifer would like to know, can you mix the gouache and the regular acrylic? Well, I don't think you can mix them together, but I think you can paint at the same time with them, right? I wouldn't recommend mixing the colors together, but I, but I think you could paint paint at the same time. You did use um, the Matisse white, didn't you? I, mean, um, I was going to, and I don't think I did. Maybe I did. I, I think forget. You used a little bit, but you didn't, it wasn't much of a. But I wasn't trying to mix anything. Does no. that make sense? You know, I'm just putting They're both a little acrylic base, and yeah, we are using the acrylic base, not the water. Color yeah, not the watercolor. They're acrylic base. What I, I was surprised is the colors were very, very bright. They're very vibrant. Yeah. There's a lot of dye in them. A lot of color. Pigment, you know, because that's what um, that's what sort of sets stuff apart here. Let's get some brighter colors going up this way. See, I'm adding some more flowers, just kind of going up. This is fun. You're just going to add some more flowers to my vase. You know, when I'm at the grocery store buying flowers, I'm counting. Let's see, I say, what can I get for four bucks or five bucks? But here, we can just. You can make your own arrangement. We can make our own arrangements. And I want something going up this way, too. I think that there needed to be some something there. This is fun, right? Something going up that way. You, have you gotten one of those wet again to see if they, they don't go back to. Oh, no. Um, if you put, here's, a, here's somebody said, you can't wake them up. They're, they're an acrylic. They're dried acrylics, right? So here's like this one. If I took a brush, which I, you know, right? Clean water and um, did this, you're not going to get any paint on here. Does that make sense? This is dry. It won't lift back off. It's not going to lift back off. Now it looks darker now, but when it dries, it'll go back to what it was. Yeah, it'll dry, go back to where it was, but it's not going to lift off. They were just so nice to travel with because, you know, look at all this. You know, I mean, this is a lot to take, a, all your and that's stuff. that's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight, and, you know, you don't want all that weight. 
Especially if you're flying now, they could charge you. Well, yeah, well, they always have charged you, John. Well, was this a big surprise? I mean, that, I'm sorry. They have, but, but now they're, you know, look, we bought special suitcases that would fit in the overhead, and we put them in the overhead just to make sure they'd fit and all that stuff. And by the time we got up to where the line was and they lit us on the airplane, all the overhead space was gone, and they insisted on checking it. And then they had this other stupid rule. I mean, not stupid perhaps isn't the right word, but inconvenient rule. Let's put it that way. Rule. Inconvenient was if you had any batteries in the suitcase that lithium batteries. That you, lithium batteries. So if you were normally going to check on, you know, you weren't going to check on. You were carrying them on because that was okay, but they didn't want them in the hold. Well, then they took your suitcase and said, by the way, you can't have these kind of batteries in the hold. Well, then don't take my suitcase. Figure out where you're going to put it on the plane. Because that's not how I packed it. Well, you better take them out. Because, you know, I don't know what the, the, they think is going to happen. But this is like some new, lots of different new stuff is happening here, you guys. See, then we're coming along. Oh, this is kind of cool, isn't it? Don't you guys think so? In a kind of a funny way? This kind of, I think this is kind of fun. Um, Ginger, why do you put a slash through your signature? Oh, I love telling you guys that. The reason I put a slash through my signature is everybody needs a special signature. And I, I paint, I use Cook, I don't use Ginger. And, um, and why did you decide to use Cook instead of Ginger? Well, because sad as this is, we live in a time when a painting done by a male artist is sometimes considered, seen by others as more superior to a painting done by a female. So I make sure that the only name that anybody sees is a non-gender name. Does that make sense? That you can't tell what the gender is of the name. Okay? So um, um, we're just darkening this. So I, when I was in France painting with my daughter Cinnamon, we were over there back in uh, 2001, 2002. What we discovered is that... Um, uh, What's this? I need some dark in here now. Uh, is that the, instead of saying leaving Paris, like we get a sign and you're out of Houston, it says leaving Houston or leaving Texas or whatever, right? What they do in France is they just put a red slash through the name and then say that you left town. You know, that's how you know you left, okay? All right, now we're putting in the accents. You guys see that? So we're putting in the darker accents closer to the. Um, and that looks primarily now. purple? This is purple and a little tiny bit of um, paints gray. Paints gray and a little tiny bit of red. <laughs> right. So I'm putting in some of this dark color right here, like this, and I want something dark next to here. See, see how that sort of popped that out a little bit. We need some of this dark over here too, and a couple of places in here. I will go to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So we're we're uh, guaranteeing that the eyes kind of kind of hanging in around our vase here. And then kind of reshaping our flower, okay? So I think we get awfully close to getting this finished. So the red slash basically means I've finished my um, painting. Hmm. Really? Yeah, and then, of course, and then you'll see me go back and fix it anyway, but th that was the idea behind it, <laughs> you know? So, all right, so do I need any stems here? You're probably wondering what this brush is. This is a Black Pearl number 4 pointed brush, but any old pointed brush would work. Um, I'm feeling like we need some more dark here, but I just maybe some light. And getting too. back to the cruise, if you guys are interested in knowing our cruise schedule, go to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. Use the contact us form and we'll put you on the list. Yeah, if you want to come along, we, you know, we're not, again, a lot of times, you know, uh, we're not charging. You know, you, you would have, you're, you're on your own, right? It's just, we're going to be there. You want to come hang out with us and take a cruise and hang out with us when we're cruising? That's fine. You know, be nice. And um, you know, we're fine with that. And, we're, we're, you know, and, and if you decide to do it and you've booked it, you know, what we can do is we can, you know, you know maybe um, John and I don't get up before 11, but, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff to do. Meet you for lunch or something or dinner or be, be fun. And, you know, that's some, you know, when we're, if the weather's nice, sometimes we can, um, we can paint even when we're sailing. We figured out we can paint even when we're sailing if the weather's nice. All right, so let me back up for this. I think we did pretty well with this. Don't you think, you guys? How many hours did we spend on this, John? Do I know? 
Mm, I got 145. All right, so I'm sorry, but I mean, I could have broken this up, but I, I think that's not shabby, well, I know right? I you would have broken it, though. Yeah, well, that's it. See, where would we have broken it up? I like the vase. Don't you like the, the I vase? I think the vase came out cool. I think the vase came out cool. I like the added, added shadow. Looks yeah. like he has a little one there, but it's really subtle. Yeah, it is subtle. And almost, this is one of those colors where you can kind of use up some of the rest of your paint and um, almost, um, um, you know, put another layer of, um, you can't ever have too many layers of paint on a deal like this where I almost feel like I need to, you know, lighten up this part of here just with the brush strokes going like this. Kind of, you know, how everything's kind of dried, kind of dark, and then coming down here like this. And, you know, maybe coming up this way. Now that I kind of see, I maybe want a little blue up by these flowers. Now that I can kind of see where everything is, I can see how far up I want the blue, where I want it. Maybe want it a little bit lighter over here. Can play with this a little bit. And let's see, really, he had something pretty dark right next to here, this part of the vase right here. This is why you want to come back and touch stuff up later, right? And then right in here too, see? So that these handles show up. See that? I mean, just that, didn't that make a difference? Just that kind of stuff. Is you kind of got to watch and see what you're doing as far as, you know, hooking, hooking stuff back up. Going to give that little accent. Yeah, these little accent colors can make it can make a difference, and then maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, green, you know, a little bit of a touch of green in some of these little flowers that maybe you didn't see, or you can take some green, and if you got carried away with your spots, a little dots, you could put a little green next to it, maybe, or maybe you got some green leaves that didn't show up, maybe you need to put a couple little green somethings, right? I think something needs to come definitely needs to come over here. Oh, look at that. I didn't even see that. There's a sunflower on here. We're doing it, right? There's a sunflower. It's on the left. I, I never even saw that. The, the, the just out here in the... And this is why she says she's going to sign it, and then we go for another half hour. But, I mean, did you see the sunflower? Maybe you guys I noticed did, it. I did, but I figured it was artistic licensing that you wanted to leave it out. Well, it's very odd, but, you know, we'll put it, you know, with a little brown well, center here. It's a wildflower. It's all right. It belongs. Oh, you know, one time years ago, we, I got this package of wildflowers from Home Depot. They were these flowers. They were pretty pricey, too. It got, got these neat flowers. And um, um, so we put them out in the front yard, and we got this letter from the associations, some sort of snotty letter about cleaning up our weeds. <laughs> and, I mean, they didn't understand that these were real yeah, wild wildflowers. Yeah, you can't have that. Okay, I'm an absolute scarlet. Maybe so this is what I what's want. What's the weight and size? Of what? I'm not sure. That's the weight and size of what? Well, the paintings are 12 by 16. I'm not sure. What do you think it weighs? A pound? This Maybe one? A pound and a half? <laughs> what do you think? I, I don't think that's the question they're answering. <laughs> do you think they're asking? Do you think so? I have no idea. I just saw it go by. Weight and size. Maybe they wanted to know the weight and size of this uh, art kit. Uh, oh, I think it weighs nothing, the little art kit. Oh, yeah, that weighs nothing. It, it weighs nothing. Here, here's a few little dark red dots going up in here now. What is the weight and size of the Stillman? Oh, the, the sketchbook. Um, it's a well, the sketchbook and, is what? It's like a five and a half by eight. They're little. Yeah, they're five and a half by eight. And the paperweight, it's called a mixed media. Mixed media with water. So a few I little think it's red a dots. Like it's that, coming up here with red dots. Alpha series. Alpha, we did Alpha and Delta, I think. I've it's thicker enough. than regular taping paper. Definitely thicker than that. I don't think it's like There's a one There's another little yellow flower that was here. Uh, some little red, little red flower that was little orange, yellow flower that was here. Now I'm getting into the thicker paint. And I'm just dropping. You see that? Now it's getting thick enough. People asked, asked about texture. We're now just dropping a little paint on there. A little thicker paint, a little bit brighter. Just a heavy body by itself. Yeah, just by itself, kind of gooping it on a little bit. And I want some of these little areas here to be brighter. 
that kind of disappeared on me, see? See how this one kind of, we put this in originally, remember that? And it's kind of gone. Which so one was the Mickey Mouse? Is it the green one at the top? Was that the well, Mickey Mouse? Well, this was this, but it was just here. But again, these are, let's, let's look at this. See, it's got to be bright glob of yellow there, see? Brighten it up. Now we're kind of getting it. And there was a little yellow in here. We'll see, like that. And um, let's take a little bit of red here and make this a little smaller. This black is a little big, this black center on this one. It's a little big right there, so I'll make that a little smaller. And let's see what else. I'm, so I'm kind of looking at this as it's drawing. We're talking to you, and I'm kind of showing you how to paint this, but it's kind of pretty, isn't it? I think it's pretty. I think it's kind of working out. And um, Basically, you saw her design it and paint it right here. I mean, she had something to go by, but she ginger did the ginger touching to it. Yeah, let's just see a little bit of purple in here like that. And this one, we want some darker blue, purpley color Jimmy right here like at the base. Jimmy would like to know, does the lilac on the left need a shadow? This one? On the left. This one. Yeah, which was the lilac? Well, it probably was, I don't know, this is right. <laughs> yeah, that's your right hand. That's right. There is some dar something darker under here. There's definitely you're talking about dark. There's, it's got darker. Here's just some ultramarine blue, right? It's darker right here. Just doing some darker colors right here, right there on this side. See, see now. So just putting some darker. This is why you keep layering. Here's some ultramarine blue and making it a little bit darker down in here like that. Coming back under here, and then there's definitely some darker right here on this base of this flower right there like that and there's definitely some well that just disappeared didn't it this blue flower right here do to do to this one which seems to have disappeared but we got that's a little brighter that's got a little bit of white next to it right here like that and uh, there was a yellow one here too. I didn't. I missed that one. Look at that. There was a nice little bright yellow one right here. Glob that on. It takes a while to put all these in. I hope this is somewhat entertaining, right? Um, I could blow it up and see it better. Um, oh, there was some light green in that. Let's see. Let's make that happen. And out of this flower right here, then there was some light green that happened out this way over that black, kind of like this, with some yellow with it. There, something like that. Which sienna did you use in the beginning on the back? Uh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna? Mm -hmm. I used a little burnt sienna, and um, he had some more definite, he has some more, if you're talking about this, he has some more definite looking stems than I've done, you know what I mean, where he actually, you know, did a few stems actually crossed over some places and said, you know, there's a stem. But, you know, I don't know that that adds anything. There was definitely a stem going to this one, that flower there. I mean, you could add a few, but I think sometimes it just that just gets so busy it gets a little crazy. Um, but, you know, that's the fun thing about being an artist. You can decide that maybe you like it, maybe you don't. She may think that this one, because I, I made it so bright, she, I bet that's the one she's thinking could use the shadow. Let's make that more of a lilac color. What do you think, you guys? I'm I'm for I'm with you. Yeah, Let's just tone that bit. down. Let's just push that back a little bit. That's a good idea. Let's push that back just a tear. What color is between the table and the wall? In the it, this is the, this black right here. What do you think he used on his? Black, for sure. Because our, our little thumbnail looks like a, a sienna color. It's very brownish. What do you mean, right here? No. Do uh, you see the little band? On, well, you yeah, it's, it's very dark. Yeah. It's okay. dark. It's like, like a black. It's just, he, he did this sort of black. Um, and then, you know, like I say, everything's kind of going sideways. You know, with the, with the you know, I mean, then, then these, these lines are going up and down like that. Right. And well, that's basically it, how he gave the illusion between the wall and the table. Yeah, and he's got it a little bit darker on this side right here, 
where everything's kind of going up and down. And then he's got the browns all up in here, which are really pretty. All the little browns and, and the brown colors, which are, you know, again, kind of up coming up this way from the top and are darker like that. And they're coming in there. But when I look back at this, um, I'm just looking at the colors that he's got, like for instance, um, you know, he's got some bright, you know, some little bits of bright red here and there that kind of, you know, pop all the flowers out. I mean, you know, we're not trying to, you know, we're just saying, how do you put a group of flowers like this together? How might you do it? Um, this is how we did it. How's that, right? Just this is how we thought we might do it. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow night. But if you guys, you know, if you like this stuff, if you put the, if you put your, if you put these videos in your playlist, that's a good thing. Thumbs up, nice comments. We appreciate you, and we want to invite everybody to check out our, our acrylic art club. And um, oh, speaking of flowers, you know what we're going to be doing for our members this week, and I think this is really cool. This is another Van Gogh. All right. So our members of gingercliffelive.gallery. You can make this bigger, but this is with lots of texture. Look at this one. This is a Van Gogh. Isn't this cool? And the paint is really just, thick on this. You just used a brush on that, right? Yeah, but it did it really thick. Yeah. I'm going to show you how we did that. This is a, another Van Gogh. This will be on our... And again, you could do this much larger. You could do it in a size like this. And um, there's less detail, so we could show it to you how to do it smaller, so you don't, when you're learning, you don't waste so much paint. But this is our... Oh, Van Gogh lesson. This will be released this Thursday for our members, of, and you can, um, you know, try us for a week for nine ninety five. You can have access to over three hundred and fifty paintings. You kick can the tires. Kick the tires. See what you can do. So anyway, I think if I did anything else, I mean, I could probably paint this. I could paint on this for another couple hours. You know, really. But I think we're okay. I think I like what we've got, and. Um, so, you know, from that point standpoint, I think we did all right. If I blew this up, it's so interesting to me, all the different How things many, that he uh, did. How many cookies is this particular lesson, you reckon? How many cookies? Well, you know, I don't know. I think this was, this wasn't hard, was it, you guys? Did you think, did you perceive this as being particularly hard? A lot of colors going on there. Well, you know, more than anything, there's a lot of colors, right? I want to make this flower a little bit deeper into this one. I'm going to make that one a little skinnier. There we go. I'm going to say this is a, at least a two cookie with a crumbs. Two cookie and crumbs might, yeah, that might be a good. Yeah, I think quite a three. I think, you know, a two cookie person could do it. Now, the uh, Van Gogh that's on our, for our week, this week, what do you think that one is? Oh, I think that's a two. That was very simple. Two. Very simple to do. Okay. Very simple to do. And, you know, and again, I think the more you do these flowers, the, the, the more you're going to like doing them, you know, the funner it will be for you. Let's put a little light here. There was a we lost a little light here on this edge of this flower. There we go. I like that little flower there. That little purple flower is real important to the whole the whole picture. And um, let's put some green up in this one. Kind of tone this one back a little bit. I wanted some light up here, but maybe not quite as light as we had it. So there, that's that looks pretty good. And uh, anyway, so if the last questions before we say goodbye. Um, and if you pull this up, you probably could, you know, spend two or three hours playing more with this. But anything else before we say goodbye? Well, Gail had a question. She said I missed it, but I can't find the question. Gail, you got a, you got a chance here. We're going to say, say <laughs> this. And incidentally, we, we, we appreciate you guys very much. We, um, tomorrow night we'll do another painting giveaway. We didn't do it tonight because we just barely had time to finish this one. But we'll give away another picture tomorrow night. Some, something that I paint right here live. It'll Remind me. A, uh, what we, it's a 10 minute painting. Some, another little 10 minute painting. We'll do we that. Start, we start the uh, contest and she has 10 minutes to finish it before Alexa says time's up. Yep, there you go. Oh yeah, see, I've been honestly. I could sit here and play. This gives me an idea of how I do it. You know, would want to do something like this, and I've kind of erased the chalk marks. And I love this vase. Don't you think that's an interesting vase? Very different. Okay, you guys, there we are. And let's see. All right, one last thing I'll do. I'll tell you a little bit about this guy, right? All right, information. I promise you some information on him. Okay, information. 
information. Um, let's see, what do we know about him? Um, um, let's see, where is he from? Uh, 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 Bordeaux, so he was French, okay? And um, he was drafted in the Prussian Wars in 1871. He did a lot of charcoal drawings, all right? Didn't do a lot of, uh, did a lot of charcoal drawings. Um, he had a keen interest in Hindu and Buddhist religion and culture. Um, he had, he was influenced by the Japanese painting style. But I think what, to me, the most interesting was his colors. I think um, his colors on this vase and everything, I think to me were extremely interesting, the way he picked his colors, right? Um, he colors are mostly yellow, gray, brown, and light blue. Um, so, um, you know, some of his, you know, he, he died in, um, in 1916. Oh. 1816, sorry, 1816. When, we, I'm when was he born? He, he, you know, I don't know. He, he, okay. he, he, he was, um, uh, let's see, where, where did I find that? I'm just kind of scrolling down on his stuff. He, he died in 18, 1816. Tomorrow is at 7.30 p.m., same time as this one, Central Time. All our lives are Monday and Tuesday. He was 76 when he died. Well, that's a pretty good long time. He was born in 1840. Died okay, wait a minute. He was born in 1840, and he died in 1916. Okay. There, sorry, in Paris. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden he was born before he died and died in four. And I was getting confused over here. I'm a little confused too. Well, listen, I've got my glasses on. This thing's very far away. But it's interesting. He's a French guy. I, but I love his colors. Don't you love And I love the idea of all this. I thought this was fun. This is a good thing. This, is a, this should be super easy for you guys to paint. Okay. I think you'll have fun with it. Is that the bear next to you there? Oh, they yeah. can bring him up and say hey. Let, let him say hey to everybody. Sam, he, Sammy he's still got to, his captain suit on. Sammy wanted boy. to say hi to everybody from the cruise. He wanted me to hold him up like this. Yeah, hold him up. He was just want to say hi <laughs> that he really uh, he, he enjoyed his cruise and everybody thought he was a big hit. He everybody comes loved, with everybody us. Everybody loves the bear. And he comes. And he, you know, the captain. You know, did his little thing. Right. Crew all loved it and thought it was great that we took him along. So. All right, guys, that's going to be it for us tonight. I mean, this is a two-hour and two-minute lesson. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, we appreciate the fact you hung in there with us. Absolutely. How many people are still with us, you might ask? How many we got? 284. Uh, oh, well, all right. So uh, right now, listen, you guys know our Facebook page. We, you know, show us what you've got. And, uh, you know, we, we have. A, I like to put some of your stuff up on Pinterest, too. You know, yeah, we so, you know we're we excited to see what you painted painted to. It's always fun to see what you painted. We'll have a couple more artists tomorrow. We didn't get to them tonight. Some other samples. Of, of what you guys have been doing. Yeah. So we appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Have a nice night, everybody. Night. All right. Night, everyone. Night, John. Do that again. I muted you already. <laughs> night, John. <laughs> Good night, Ginger. Night, Sammy. Night, Sammy. Night. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.